Well, I didn't grow up around libraries because in, in Afghanistan they didn't exist when I was there. I, in the 1970s, I went to bookstores really to be around books and I was a big book lover from a very young age. So I went to bookstores to be around shelves of books and spend time in, in their company. But I discovered uh, libraries in France when I moved there in 1976. And I remember walking into one the first time and just kind of, <laughs> kind of being in this belief that I could walk out with the book without having to, to pay for it and I could borrow it and read it and then I could come back and get another one. So it was a really a kind of a novel idea for me and uh, I was like a kid, a proverbial kid in the candy books because I, uh, candy store, because I read so many books growing up, loved books, loved being around them. And so um, my first experience with the library was actually in France and I've loved them since. Well, now I'm, I'm a parent, so I take my children to the library and you know, we'll lounge around, we'll read, we'll get on the computer, we'll browse. Um, I spent uh, part of the writing process of my first book in a library. I was in Sunnyvale, uh, Northern California, and I went there to uh, just get a booth and sit down and work on The Kite Runner. So part of that book was written in a public library. Uh, when I was in full practice as a physician, I went to the library every single day that I worked. I spent my lunch hour across the street at the Mountain View Public Library. I was, it beat the conference room in the medical clinic. So I ate lunch and then I walked across the street, went to the library, went upstairs, read books, newspapers, and just kind of sat in that lovely, lovely space. So it's an integral part of my life, and um, I want it to become a part of my children's lives. I do want them to see the library as a, as a shared communal space where they can go and be safe and enjoy books. Well, I think uh, communities that don't have libraries, communities that limit their libraries end up suffering as a result. Libraries are very special places. They're sort of the ultimate egalitarian institution. People from all walks of life, all socioeconomic backgrounds can come and use a library as a place to learn, as a place for information, for education, for opportunity. You know, libraries are more than just a place where you can go and check out a book. You know, they're places that, that promote, you know, social discourse, that promote social justice, they're places that promote free thought, curiosity in children. They're often at the front line of identifying a community's problems and its needs. So, um, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's really difficult to overstate the value of a library to a community. Well, my first novel, The Kite Runner, has found itself as, a, as a frequently appearing on the banned books list. And frankly, I, it's something that's always perplexed and puzzled me. I'm never really quite sure what children are supposedly being protected from because by now I have received thousands and thousands of letters from both middle school and high school students, children who, kids who read the book either you know, at home for, their, for themselves or in classrooms. And I think judging on the content of those letters, they're far, far more sophisticated than we give them credit for. They get uh, the context, they get the, uh, you know, the, the reasons why certain scenes are put in, uh, they really understand that and they articulate that to me. Um, I feel uh, that far more harmful to kids is so much of the pop culture that they're exposed to through television, through the internet, things that um, promote um, you know, seeking fame and seeking money and, uh, and being popular, whereas, you know, um, the kids who've read my books, for example, The Kite Runner, um, frequently tell me that it was the book that set them on the path of reading more and that they've decided to, they actually like books after they read The Kite Runner and, and, and yeah, there are uh, things in the, in the book that are of a serious nature, but I feel the kids have the uh, intellectual capacity to deal with those things. Ultimately, the decision does lie with the parent. Not all kids are the same. So it is uh, a conversation that children need to have with their kids when they're reading a book like The Kite Runner. But I think to flat out ban it is doing the kids a disservice because the book, I think, has served 
as a window into Afghanistan, as a window into that region of the world for the kids and allowed them to feel connected to a part of the world that is so distant uh, from their own lives. Well, I think that's something that we're going to see happen in the future. I think right now publishers are um, experiencing an upheaval in their usual business practices and everybody is trying to understand really the full impact of the electronic revolution on the publishing industry, including publishers, authors, and to some extent libraries as well. Um, I think the dialogue between publishers and libraries on the availability of ebooks will continue. My guess is that at some point uh, ebooks will become available to libraries and electronic content will be available to library patrons. I think ultimately that's for the best of both publishers, readers, and uh, also in line with the core mission of libraries. I'm currently working on finishing my book tour, <laughs> which I, I'm actually almost done with. I'll be done tomorrow. But um, I plan on settling down when I get home and, uh, and think of a new book. But right now, I've, I haven't started working on anything.